Muslim. What does it mean? What wisdom does this one word hold? Allah explained the entire process and teachings of how to find him with only one word. Yet we ignore this one universal word. If we really paid attention, the entire Quran is in this one word. The entire teachings of all scriptures, all prophets, all enlightened ones worldwide is in this one word. The secret to the divine truth is in this one word. The door to the divine is in this one word. Even if the entire planet had no scripture except this one word, it would be enough. It just takes some work, inner thinking and self-inquiry. Because as Allah states, where the hardship comes ease. This word is Muslim. One word can explain it all. What does it mean? What does Muslim mean? Does it mean a person who follows a religion called Islam? Does it mean a person who follows the Prophet Muhammad? Does it mean a person who worships only one God called Allah? These are the basic understandings of the meaning of the word. The word Muslim, in fact, is a verb. It's not a title, it's not a noun, it's a verb. Literally, it means a person who submits or surrenders. So the translation of the word is a person who submits and surrenders themselves, their will to Allah. Let's start here. It's a verb denoting an action, a doing of some sorts. The doing of this verb is defined by submitting or surrendering. So let's leave out all the other meanings along with the titles of belonging to a group, religion, etc. An idea that still separates humans via the differences in faith. The word points to what Allah states is the only way to him, which is by submitting, surrendering. Allah is referring to a way that is universal, a way found all around the globe, belonging to any faith or not. It's the same path, a path that is based in submission surrendering. We are told that Islam was since the time of Adam. So Musliming, so the verb of Muslim was applicable since the first human till now. So what is that? What is Allah pointing to in this word? A person who submits and surrenders. What does this mean? What is the wisdom of the word? What does it teach and guide to? If a person submits and surrenders, what are they submitting and surrendering? Let's look at some basic dictionary definitions. To submit is to accept or yield to a superior force or to the authority or will of another person to present a proposal application or other document to a person or body for consideration or judgment surrender to stop resisting to an enemy or opponent and submit to their authority to give up or hand over a person right or possession typically on compulsion or demand. So then Muslim will mean to accept or yield to a superior force, authority or will, in other words Allah, to stop resisting, to hand over, present something to an authority. Allah is pointing to us that we must submit to him something, 
to surrender to him something. There is something we have that he wants. Something that he requires us to surrender. He wants us to submit it, to hand it over, present it completely to him. What is this? What is this that we must hand over? Is it a physical thing that we must hand over? It cannot be that, as you cannot submit material to the immaterial. So what is it that is immaterial that we must hand over? Is it the body? That's made of matter. Is it the brain? That's made of matter. What then is immaterial that we have to present to the Creator that puts us upon His true path. Let's examine the mind as it's immaterial. Let's say to submit our will. What is will? It's immaterial, so we can go from there. Will is expressing future events, expressing inevitable events. Can we submit this? How does one submit will? With will comes intent. Can we submit this as well? Will and intent are based in thoughts. Thoughts are in the mind. The mind creates these concepts. Are these concepts real? They only hold truth to the mind that created them. They don't hold truth out there in reality. Really put it to the test until its absolute truth is seen with no doubt. Who is it? that makes decisions and comes up with thoughts to form will and intent. Can this idea, concept, of the person that you are, who has will and intent, can this be submitted? This idea of self that we call I. Every human in every language, every person on earth refers to themselves as I. Can this concept of I be submitted? Essentially speaking, can one truly submit and hand over our self, our I? If you submit yourself, who is then doing the submitting? If we submit this idea, concept of self, who is surrendering this idea concept of self. This opens a deeper question. What am I if myself is submittable? Who is this other I that is submitting this false I? Who or what is this other I that will submit the self, will, intent, beliefs, ideas, concepts, etc.? So what am I? If the idea of my I is submittable. Am I my name? No, I was given it when I was born. My name never really existed in reality. Am I my ethnicity? No, I was born into this body. My ethnicity is a concept based on ideas that don't exist in reality. Am I my likes or my dislikes? No, because likes and dislikes are concepts and ideas that my mind created during life experiences. They don't exist in reality. Am I my attachments? No, because attachments are based in false concept of happiness, joy, in a physical or immaterial thing that doesn't exist in reality. Am I my memories? No because memories are just a sample of an experience in the past, most of which have been manipulated by the mind over the years. A memory is just the memory of the last time you remembered it, not the memory of the first experience. Therefore, it's based in fallacy, and a person evolves in time. They are not that person in their memories. We can keep going, and we would see all of what is termed as you, the idea of you, your thoughts, your beingness, your I-ness completely falls apart under scrutiny. 
So what am I? This question will lead to a point. A point where one sees an absolute truth after putting all of the self to the test. That the self is all lies, all based in fallacy, that truly doesn't exist in reality, all concepts. So package the entirety of you up and submit it, the entirety of self, all of you completely hand it over. This is the key. Once you let go and submit all of you, something happens. You've submitted your mind, beliefs, senses, humanity, thoughts, memories, attachments, etc. Once this false you dies to you, because you saw its fallacy and left it, something extraordinary happens. Since mind and body have been realized completely as false, what's left behind is something that was always there, always there, right in front of you. It existed before you were born and shall exist after your death. For now, we shall just call this the spirit, the soul. This would be the first time soul is the conscious experience of. Here is where the secret of everything lies. This is where all the answers are found. This is where one finally understands what they are and why they are. This is where one understands the purpose of life. Have you had a look at yourself? Have you ever truly looked at yourself, the real true self? With one look, the eternal is there waiting and has always been looking at you. Have you looked? What you will find is beyond words. Have you looked? So go inwards and shed the layers of concepts and beliefs and each shedding is a submission, each shedding is a surrendering. So surrender and submit layer upon layer, and each layer is veil upon veil. So every false idea and concept, submit that. See that it is not what you call you. See that it is not I. Then finally, when you come face to face with I, that submits itself then the door to the divine opens and that is one's return to Allah one word to describe the entire process and this one word when understood in this manner that one must shed and surrender and submit the self will find that this path is universal this path can be found all over the globe. This path can be traced back to the beginning of humanity. And this is the essence of every spiritual path that has existed in all nations, all tribes, in all history. So submit yourself and see that there is only Him, only Allah.